Welcome back to Stage Left. On today's episode, it's day one of 365, and today we're discussing Bertolt Brecht's Mother Courage and Her Children. Stay tuned. Soon, but we had to come through Abington on our way. Oh, God. Welcome back to the channel. I'm so glad you're here for day one of 365. If you missed the last video, I'm going to be reading 365 plays in 365 days. And this is day one. And we're talking about Bertolt Brecht's Mother Courage and Her Children. Just due to the sheer veracity and number of videos that I'm producing in the next year, the editing on these may not be great. So bear with me. I'm trying to improve it as we go along, but I've got a video to do. Today we're going to discuss Mother Courage and her children, but before we do that, we have to talk about the playwright. Unlike many plays who can just kind of be read by their book, Brecht's works aren't like that. You have to understand his theories as Brecht was changing theater as we know it. In the early 20th century, Brecht was born in Germany, and he began writing plays. In 1924, he relocated to Berlin, where he started producing works. But in 1939, he released this pivotal work, Mother Courage and Her Children, one of his many anti-war fascist plays to be released during that era. Something was happening in Germany in 1939 that is not for this video, but Stuff was happening, and it, it wasn't good. But anyways, Brecht wrote Mother Courage to talk about the terrors of war and how someone who seeks to profit from it might have everything taken away. And spoiler alert, Mother Courage in the story indeed does have the most important things one could say taken away. She has three children, Eilif, Swiss Cheese, and Katerin. Eilif represents boldness. Swiss cheese, yes, that's really his name, represents honesty. And Katrin represents sacrifice. Brecht believed that the audience should know that they were watching a play and there are songs and moments throughout to make sure, hey, 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 this is fake. You're not actually watching Mother Courage. And his epic theater tenets are really apparent throughout this book. But this book is, uh, this script is poignant and it really makes um, a statement even now in the early part of the 20th century. It's almost been a hundred years since Mother Courage was written, but it still makes sense. You see, Mother Courage runs a canteen wagon, which is like a supply store that moves along with the armies. And it's set in the Thirty Years' War, beginning in about 1624. The Thirty Years' War was a religious war between Catholics and Protestants in Europe, and it actually covered most of Europe. In fact, in this copy of the script I've got, it's actually got a map showing her travels all over Southern Europe. And she even goes up into now what we would call Sweden and Norway and Denmark. So she actually covers the continent in her travels in this book. And throughout the story, she loses each of her children, but chooses to continue to worry about profit. And some can argue that Mother Courage was doing what she had to do because without food, without shelter, you're going to lose your children anyways. But some can argue she was kind of um, a hand in that, if you will. This was introduced to me in grad school. I have known about Brecht for many years. I've read a couple of his plays. Mother Courage was not one of those. But it really shows a great example of what non-Aristotelian drama can become. Uh, I was really impressed with this 
it's a quick read and a good read. And one of my favorite things to do with this script actually is here on YouTube, and I'll put the link down in the description, you can actually find a fully filmed production of the Berliner Ensemble, hold that name, we're fixing to come back to that, of the Berliner Ensemble performing this work in the original German. Now, who's the Berliner Ensemble? Well, they were created by Brecht to kind of manifest his theories, if you will. Every scientist, which Brecht was a theater scientist, um, needs a laboratory. And every artist needs a studio, a studio, so to speak. And that is what Brecht created with the Berliner Ensemble. So Brecht does leave Germany. He does survive the war. He avoids the war. But then he returns back to East Germany, where he lives out the last of his days in East Berlin, dying in 1956. Among his other great works are works like The Three Penny Opera, The Life of Galileo, The Good Person of Szechuan, The Caucasian Chalk Circle, The Resistible Rise of Arturo uh, Uy. They, these, these plays can go on and on. He wrote many notable works throughout uh, his lifetime. I'm going to recommend this because I believe everyone needs to explore non-Aristotelian drama. Why? Because I was so caught up in Aristotelian drama. I believe that was the only correct way to do theater. If you do not subscribe to these illusory uh, experiences where you come in and get taken away and if you're in a field you're in a field and if you're on a plane you're on a plane if you're in Paris you're in Paris and Brecht said none of that that covers up the real meanings of these stories and the audience needs to be focused on those real meanings so a great piece in Mother Courage for you to explore so now that we've talked a little bit about the play, I want to talk about the context, and I want to talk a little bit about Brecht and the Berliner Ensemble. The um, name of the central character, Mother Courage, is drawn from the picturesque writings of a writer named Grimmelhausen. Uh, he, has, he has a central character in a novel, uh, The Runnegate Courage. And uh, that character also struggles and connives her way through the Thirty Years' War in Germany and Poland. Brecht wrote this piece in response to Adolf Hitler's invasion of Poland in 1939. It was one of nine plays that he actually wrote, and he wrote it in what we call a white heat, meaning he wrote the whole play in a little of over a month. Now, we talked about how the audience is aware that it's non-Aristotelian or not Aristotle-like, if you don't know what that means. But we also have to talk about the fact that this betrays the unities. The play takes place over the course of 12 years, from 1624 to 1636, and it's represented in 12 different scenes. Some give a sense of Courage's career, but don't provide time for the viewers to really develop any feelings or emphasize with her. In fact, in early productions, Brecht saw that the audience left the play emphasizing too much with Mother Courage, so he changed the ending. Uh, most people consider this to be one of the greatest plays of the 20th century and one of Brecht's best examples of epic theater. Like I said, the V effect, which I'm not going to butcher. We call it the alienation effect. There is a German word that, like I said, I'm not going to butcher. It's also known as the estrangement effect. And what he would do is he would, in, this, in the scenes, he would come out and go, in this scene, so-and-so dies, and then Mother Courage realizes that she is such-and-such. Such. And so he gives it away. He puts, you know, he comes out, or you will walk into a scene, and instead of there being a set, it'll just be written on the curtain, a small Swedish town. Uh, these are the kind of things that made the theater unique, but it also makes the scripts written for epic theater unique because this does not depend on some elaborate set. It does not depend on high production quality, and it doesn't even really depend on being in a theater. You could produce this play in a street with a cart, and that be it. Um, things weren't meant to be fully thought out in Brechtian theater, and this is the case with Mother Courage, and it actually comes back uh, to be a strong point for many of Brecht's plays that 
you don't need all the sets. You don't need all the lights. Um, it was originally produced in 1941. Um, it does have a score. It does have songs in it, but it's not a musical. Um, they had Swiss composer Paul Burkhardt write the original songs. Uh, and then our some of the songs, and then he orchestrated or arranged the rest. The musicians were in view of the audience. Uh, they These are things that Brecht wanted people, he wanted people to see the backstage. And so in a scene change, often you would have what he called half curtains, where you would see the people moving, like the curtain would just cover like halfway down. And so you would see all the people running around behind the curtain like that. And so uh, epic theater really took away all of those fancy um, theories that we had placed on it and said, just leave it as what it is. Read the text, deliver the moment, uh, and the audience will be moved. It did go through a little bit where it wasn't produced. Uh, just post-war, it kind of felt um, not really in the best taste to produce it, but... Uh, it didn't take it long to get back into popular society. It was produced at the Marion Beck Theater on Broadway in 1963 and directed by Jerome Robbins. If you don't know who Jerome Robbins is, uh, you, you need to go look up who Jerome Robbins is. I guess I need to add him to the list of podcast subjects. Uh, and uh, it ran for 52 performances and was nominated for four Tony Awards. Uh, during this production, um, Gene Wilder, who was in the production, met Anne Bancroft, who was the star of the production. She played Mother Courage. Gene Wilder met Mel Brooks, who was dating Bancroft at the time, and that set off a huge thing. So it has an influence on American theater from its Broadway, um, Broadway time as well. I think that's all I have to say about this piece. I have nothing but good things to say about this. Like it says on the back, widely regarded as one of the most significant works of modern drama. And it really stands as this. And if you're going to buy it, I highly recommend you get the Methuen drama. I hope my camera can see what that is. The student edition. Uh, because it's going to give you a lot of information like here's a chronology of Brecht's life uh before you even get to the play an introduction context about what the 30 years war and then like i showed you earlier um it's going to have the um breakdowns of each scene and a map in the back uh to talk about anna fearling's travel so it's such a cool piece of theater you should really check this out if you haven't I look forward to uh, being with you again tomorrow, as I said, and thank you so much for being here. Thank you for tuning in to Stage Left.